Welcome yeah. back, everyone. Sorry, we're, we're already trying to relax. So, adult coloring books are all the rage among adults. Fans tout everything from stress relief to increased focus as some of the benefits of coloring between the lines. Between the lines. <laughs> but, there, but is there any evidence about these effects or any benefits really that actually exist? Joining us with some insight, we welcome author and psychologist Dr. Tracy Alloway. Hi. Thank you for coming. This is a, we already got started. A yes. Little bit. You can see the main difference between mine and Ju Julie. Show what? them your. Angela was showing off. This is not relaxing. This what? is relaxing. I started this to color. Is, in the, this is efficient. It's this giving took me Julie, two that minutes. Looks angry. It's giving this me anxiety. Were you minutes? angry? It's this me took her ten minutes. <laughs> All right. I don't understand what's going. On there. <laughs> okay, it's so efficiency. Dr. Alloway, tell us why you decided to do this study. Well, we had an opportunity, my graduate student Jordan Ruddock and I had an opportunity to work with the Veterans Association here in Jacksonville. And one of the key features of um, veterans is that up to 30% of them experience PTSD, mm. which is an anxiety disorder. And so we really wanted to understand what kinds of therapy that's really, you know, low cost, minimal, and a lot of fun that they might be able to do and whether or not it actually has any benefits, like, you know, fit coloring fans are suggesting. So we had a great opportunity to compare coloring, just like what we've been doing here, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and free drawing. So you get a blank piece of paper and you're just sort of asked to draw for 30 minutes or 20 minutes or so. And here's what we found, that um, veterans with PTSD actually showed less anxiety wow. and less stress after just 20 minutes of coloring what we call a structured drawing. So that would be a, a picture like this mm -hmm. that's actually defined. And in our case, we used a mandala because, um, again, the idea of a circle tends to bring in this idea of the inner self and calm the inner chaos. And we found it really exciting because one of the key features of anxiety is that these constant thoughts are kind of running through yeah. your head. Um, and one of the comments was that it really brought things into focus, mm -hmm. that they were able just to calm their thoughts and just be really present, be in that particular moment. But it I, takes 20 minutes to do that? Or <laughs> to get there? Possibly sooner. Well, we, we set 20 minutes. And the reason we chose 20 minutes as our time is because previous research has done that with college students as well as with children. They found that 20 minutes seems to be this number that yields benefit. But I mean, really, 20 minutes isn't very long. You can do it while waiting at a doctor's mm -hmm. office, waiting yeah. to pick up your child in the school line or something. And that so, could be an hour, though, Doc. <laughs> yes, <laughs> very true. So you can triple the benefits. Yeah, yeah exactly. You're sure. calm as a cucumber by the time the kid comes oh, in the yeah. car. <laughs> Which you need. I've noticed a lot of these coloring books that have been popping up all over. But I mean, do the lines, do they, uh, why not just a regular coloring book? Why yes. does it have to be so many particular shapes and yeah. intricate, yeah. time consuming? <laughs> <laughs> Why do we need 20 minutes? I love That's it. what I'm hearing. Too. This okay. would take, uh, you know, yeah. that seems like it would take a lot longer. Well, then for two reasons, really. The first reason is that the complexity, you do need a, a task that is complex. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is you want it to engage you. You need it to maintain your interest. Because if it's too simple, you're just going to disengage after a few minutes. You're just going to think, well, this is kind of boring. I don't really want to do that. So that complexity in the coloring activity is very important. So if you're going to choose to do this, pick a topic that interests you, whether it's colors or animals or so mm -hmm. on. And the second reason is that you also want it to have a structure. And again, researchers, both, both my own study as well as other researchers have found that if you don't have a structure, if you just give them a piece of paper and say, hey, you have 20 minutes, go for it, draw yeah. whatever you like, stick yeah. figures, yeah. whatever, that actually induces anxiety mm -hmm. because you're thinking, what do I do now? I've got a blank sheet of paper. I don't know what to do. And in fact, we found in our study, some of the veterans would start writing down their schedule. They oh, just wow. didn't know what else to do. They really needed that structure to help them focus their attention. What so. about the ones I see a lot now on, on social media? There's the ones that you can color in with your finger. Does right. it make a difference whether it's a manual pen and paper or whether it's just doing yeah, like it on, a on social media? Yeah. yeah. And I think that's a great question. We don't know the answer from a study, but I would speculate that it doesn't matter. And okay. the reason for that, again, is you want it to engage your interest. And if that, you know, using your finger to color is helping you focus, mm -hmm that it's doing what it's supposed to do. Now, how is this helping to boost the memory, though? Yeah, so that's what's interesting, Henny. What we found was that it's not so much the coloring, it's the drawing part of it. And I got to give a shout out. This is um, done by a friend of mine, Joshua Dean, who's a veteran. I um, mean, he's oh, out wow. in Portland. And he drew this uh, image right here. Nice. And um, the idea of free drawing is that you actually have to engage your working memory at this mm. point. So now it's more than just this mindless activity of filling in the lines, like you were saying a bit earlier. But you actually have to think about, you know, creatively, what do I want to put on paper? Paper. What do I want to put together? Mm -hmm. And that's where you see working memory benefits, which also is great for veterans because a lot of brain imaging studies show that the prefrontal cortex, their working memory, is often disengaged. They're not oh. using that aspect of the brain because that's the part that's shutting down. That's mm -hmm. the part that's dealing with the trauma, that's dealing with what they've seen, and they don't want to bring that up. So 
encouraging them just to draw is a great way to kind of reactivate using their working memory to focus. And no. veterans with specifically PTSD obviously yes. are in a lot need of yes. figuring out what treatments work, but are these results universal between, along any adults, maybe college students? Yeah, and that's a great question too. So we found that the best results when it came to anxiety and stress reduction was only for veterans with PTSD. The working memory benefits were across the board for veterans. Mm -hmm. But like you said, there are studies to show that college students and children also show benefits when it comes to reducing anxiety. So if you have a young child or a college student that has an exam coming up, coloring is a great way and pretty quick, really, yeah. um, to it's be able to minimize too. anxiety. I, I, <laughs> yes. I, 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 I find so I was coloring with Julie, then it was great. <laughs> I made you too anxious, right? <laughs> you did. Yeah, and yeah. I can understand when yeah, you're pick in... a good coloring buddy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A calm one. <laughs> I, I can understand when you're in the moment and you're doing it and your anxiety mm -hmm. for them might lessen, but is that ongoing? Do they have to, do, does it eventually become more manageable the more you do this outside of the coloring? Like is it, does yeah. it have long-term effects? I think in order mm -hmm. to see long-term effects you have to be really intentional in what's going on when you're coloring. So if you're intentional as you're coloring and thinking I'm in this moment, I'm in this moment, these are strategies that I can use when I don't have a piece of paper and pencil in front of me but I'm feeling anxious, then yes, you mm -hmm. will see those long-term benefits. But if you're kind of caught up in the moment but you're not really realizing the mechanism behind why it's helping you, it's hard to transfer that to mm -hmm. just kind of sitting in your car when you have that panic attack or that anxiety mm -hmm. attack. Are there any other activities similar to, to coloring? Because I had a friend in college who said she always had the best nails and that was her way of calming <laughs> down, is that doing, right. her, doing her own manicure was a way to calm down. Yeah, that's great. And doodling actually is one that's received a little bit of research attention as well. So I actually tell my, my college students this. I said, you know, don't, if you, if you are in a lecture that's maybe not capturing your interest, don't shut down, don't pull out your phone, doodle. Because we know from research there's something called minimal engagement and when mm. you doodle it just means you're, you're kind of listening even and but you're not shutting out entirely thinking oh, what am I doing this weekend what am I doing tonight oh I really should send that email or text mm -hmm. to a friend so by doodling you're, you're focusing minimally on what's going on in front of you and that at least research has found helps you retain more information so if you don't follow Dr. Alloway on <laughs> social media, you might not have seen that she was in Iceland recently yes. for a really cool trip. So tell us about it. Yeah, so one of the things I had a chance to do um, was to go to Iceland, and we had some colleagues there looking at virtual reality. Um, yeah, it's some amazing oh, wow. landscape the there in stuff. Iceland. Oh, it was so amazing. <laughs> but that's um, we had a chance to look at virtual reality and how it actually assists with spatial navigation. And there are great implications for that, because one of the reasons is that um, virtual reality has been identified wow. as a great way to to um, identify someone with depressive symptoms. In fact, mm. it's a really key way that people with depressive symptoms tend actually to do very poorly in spatial navigation in that virtual reality environment. So by understanding how we're navigating spatially, whether we can transfer those same skills in a virtual environment, and I had a chance to you know, put the unit on, navigate through a city in Reykjavik and kind of walk around and see things, it really gives you a better understanding for how we can assist with these mental health disorders. But what's the correlation between someone who's showing depressive symptoms that they can't navigate quite as well. What's the correlation there? Uh, part of that has to do with the anxiety, so they stress, they, they shut down, or they fixate on the, the unfamiliarity of that context. And again, so sometimes with depressive symptoms, oftentimes we look at self-rating, and we want to know, are you feeling sad? Or, you know, are you socializing? So we look at either behavioral symptoms, or we ask the individual to rate themselves, which honestly aren't always that reliable. Mm -hmm. um, the individual isn't always a great judge of how they're actually feeling. So by actually giving them this virtual reality unit and looking at how they they're adjusting and adapting to this virtual environment, we can detect whether or not they're able to actually navigate, whether they're showing real deficits, whether it's because of anxiety, because of um, uncertainty, and so on. And it's a great mm -hmm. way to intervene right away. Is the bottom line that you can reprogram your brain then, so you don't constantly are affected by anxiety or yeah. depression, that you can come out of that? Yes, and I think that's what's there's a lot of exciting research to looking at triggers that would lead us to depression, and then being able to work our way back. Um, so one of the pieces of research that I published recently is looking at something as simple as optimism. Even when a you know, situation presents itself, how you frame that situation, is it a positive framing like, I didn't do so well in that interview, instead of being kind of negative, like, oh, I always do that. You know, I mm -hmm. always say too much when I shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Reframe it well. Um, now I know what not to say for next time, or now I'm going to do better next time. So that event has happened regardless, but how are you going to sure. frame that? And we found that that was the best predictor of whether or not someone would 
you know, subsequently Change. experience depressive oh. symptoms or not. Well, Dr. Yeah. Alloway, thank you so much for coming and bringing a little bit of fun <laughs> to the table today. Yes. So thank much you. fun. And so much fun. Put it down. Put it yeah. down. Yeah. Put that down. For more information on this topic and others, visit the website tracyalloway.com and we'll be right back. Put it down.